So what we're doing here is we're going to talk about the diagonals of a rectangular solid. So what this is, if I had a box, it's basically trying to connect the most furthest apart corners from each other and finding that distance. So if you look at your book, if you put your hand on one bottom corner and go diagonally to the top corner on the other side, that distance is the diagonal of this rectangular solid. So that dotted line from B to H is what we're trying to find. Now, it's kind of nice when we're dealing with rectangular solids is that every angle in this object is a what? It's a right angle. So therefore, I think, could we possibly say if I started at B and followed the dotted line up to H and I went straight down, it would intersect that ground at a 90 degree angle, yes? And what we need to do then is run back to B. What kind of, what is that? What is that form? It forms a right triangle. That right triangle is going to help us find the distance from B to H. Now notice that this particular solid tells us the side lengths, but it doesn't. It's weird. It tells us that we got a height of Z, we got a width of X, and a uh, width and length of W, or not W, Y. So we have the three side lengths, or the three sizes you would need if you wanted to find the volume, right? Length, width, and height. That's X, Y, and Z. We're going to use those as our side lengths. Now what can we assume about X, Y, and Z when we're talking about a rectangular solid? Are they anywhere else? Like, is X anywhere else? How many other times? Four times total, right? We got the A to D, E to H, and we have F to G. All of those are worth X, or X distance. That means Z is where? E, F, D, C, and H, G. I would almost think that that would be very helpful because H to G is one of my legs of the right triangle, correct? So that means I know one of my legs of a right triangle. If I know one other of those pieces, I could then use Pythagorean's theorem and solve for the third one, yes? Because we all know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We've been using that for a while. So I got z, which is hg. Let's just maybe break that triangle out. I'm going to use purple because that's the color we're using. This would be B, H, and G. Yes? And we said H, G was a length of Z. Do we know from B to G? Where is B to G? In the on this whole entire solid thing, what is B to G? Where on the solid is it? On the floor, right? But what's so special about B to G? It's diagonal across the floor. Okay, we're going to use that in a little bit. It's the diagonal across the floor. Do we know the length of that? No, we actually don't. So can I call that something else? I'm just going to call that W for now. Is that okay? Just to throw another variable in there. Why not, huh? We don't know what W is right now. We know Z should be Z. But if I call it W in that triangle that I pulled out, can I call it W on the floor as well? So I'm going to go to that triangle and call it W down here. It's a little harder to see, I think. But 
That's a W. And I gotta find B to H. I don't know. We gotta figure that out. In the last class, they wanted to call that Q. So this is Q. So I'm just I'm labeling my diagrams so that I can reference where things are. So the diagonal, the answer we want is Q. But we want ter Q in terms of the sides that we kind of know, which is X, Y, and Z. Not a W. So I got Q. It's got a Z. We're happy there. But there's a W we don't know. So if I wanted to actually try to solve this, could you guys agree that Q squared would equal W squared plus Z squared? Just using Pythagorean's theorem, right? Plug it in the sides. Or to solve for Q itself, I would have to take the square root. You guys agree with this? Which means Q is equal to the square root of W squared plus Z squared. That's about as far as I can go because I don't know what W is. Maybe W is a number so that I can plug it in. Maybe it's something else. Oh, man. What do we know about W, though? We said it was the diagonal of the bottom. What else can we say? Where is W? It's on the bottom. Oh, there's also a right triangle on the bottom. Because wouldn't you agree that this corner down here, I don't know if you can see that red mark, I'd see, there's a right triangle. So wait a minute. The triangle, I'll highlight in red, is there. So that means I actually have this triangle uh, from B, G, and C, correct? And do we know any of those sides? What are they labeled as now? The bottom is X, the side is Y, and the hypotenuse we're calling W. We know X and Y. Now, granted, you don't know X and Y, but X and Y were given as our side lengths, yes? W is something we entirely made up. So don't you think that it would be a good idea to solve for W? Because can we do that using Pythagorean's theorem? Yes, because as soon as I find W, I am going to place it into this problem up here. And once I replace W, I'll have everything in terms of stuff I know, and I'll have an answer. It's a little confusing a little bit. Hopefully it makes more sense as we go here. So, I think everybody should agree that W squared is going to equal what? It's using Pythagoras theorem. X squared plus Y squared. And I'm going to take the square root because I want W to equal something. So W itself is equal to the square root of X squared plus Y squared. The two legs that make it up, right? So that value here is going to go into there. So I'm just putting pieces together. This is a long process. It takes a while. But I'm going to take away this so I can write over here. Q then is equal to the square root of replacing W with square root of x squared plus y squared, and that has to be squared, plus z squared. What happens to a square and a square root? They'll cancel each other. And so q is equal to the square root of plus plus Isn't that so much better? Wait a minute. So wait. We just created a formula. 
we could use that formula. So if I told you x, y, and z were like two, three, and four as side lengths of the solid, all you have to do is square them all, add them all together, take the square root, and you have an answer. You will know the distance from the furthest corners away from each other. Isn't that cool? Now, that formula I am perfectly fine using unless I ask you for the two-step process. Now, the two-step process was you had to find the diagonal of the bottom, which we call W, to use that W in the Pythagorean's theorem for the triangle that's standing up. Now, when we come through a quiz and I ask you for the two-step process, I would do this long method with the numbers, and not just X, Y, and Z there here. Some of them will be numbers, some of them will be variables. But you can back yourself up or show that it does make sense or that you're getting the right answer by taking those three sides, squaring them, taking the square root, and showing that they give you both the same answer. So the quick method can give you an answer right away. The long method kind of is showing your work and why it does work. Now, this is like the type of a question that you're going to get in your homework tonight. It says, find the length of the diagonal A to C in a rectangular solid shown. Do the two-step development and do not use the formula. We created a formula, but again, I want the two-step. I want you to actually see the thought process that's going on. So again, I'm, I'll show you guys where A to C is. That's A to C right there. But A to C, to find A to C, you would also need to have B to C. Because we're going to use that two-step process, and that forms a right triangle in there. But also that is a right triangle here on the bottom. Now again, just like we talked about before, because it's a rectangular solid, it has things in common. So the two, which is a side length in the front bottom, is also on the back bottom, right? So now you can start to use these numbers. And M is the height from A to B. So you can use these numbers in conjunction with each other so that you can find that the pieces you need. I need to find the bottom triangle first which has side lengths of 2 and 3. 3, 2, here. Maybe we call this x for now, because x then can be our hypotenuse or the bottom of the triangle when it stands up. So x squared is equal to 3 squared plus, and what's 3 squared? So x squared equals 9 plus, which is, and square root, square root, so x equals the square root of 13. Is everybody okay with that? Everybody see where I got the triangle? And then when I go to put this in, As square root of 13, I now sets up, or it now sets up another triangle where M is your height, and what's the length of the bottom? Square root of 13. What do you guys want to call this one? We call this one maybe Y for now. Okay. Or the or the distance AC. We can do distance AC with a little bar up top, or that line segment AC. So if that's the case, well then AC squared is equal to 13 squared, that's a bad, plus M squared. I ran out of room there, sorry. Now remember that AC is not the variables AC, it's the letters. So we're using that as, a, as our length, that 
that stands for? So what's the square root of 13 squared? 13 plus m squared. Take the square root. And so the distance of AC is 13 plus m squared with a square root on it. But wait, for three easy payments, you can also then say, hey, there was an easier way to do this, obviously, was to use the formula we just had, right? So that means that AC, that, that line segment, is just the square root of M squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. 2 squared is 4. Plus nine, which equals <laughs> so we end up with the square root of m squared plus thirteen, which is what we found the first time. Remember, thirteen and m squared can be switched around because of the associative property. Homework, page forty-five, lesson five, forty-seven. Lesson five, day five. This is our fourth homework group because we got one day without homework. And we have 14, 17, 19, 20, and 23. Have a great day. Good weekend. Don't do anything stupid.